Right, so welcome everyone to the RPA Working in Schools webinar. Um, Join with three uh, current uh, teachers, uh, people in education at the moment, uh, people who I've known for a number of years. One of them I've worked out that I've known for over, well, nearly 30 years, it's quite scary for me as well. Uh, but some people who have been big influences on my teaching uh, over the years as well, before I uh, got the RPA job. Uh, so I want to introduce uh, Nathan, Neil and Martin as well. Uh, we're going to talk around working in schools and um, working in education and the different pathways into it and the different job role, uh, roles and uh, what to do to try and get into that uh, career and in industry. Uh, Nathan, can you just introduce yourself first of all and talk about how you got into teaching? Yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Nathan Bond. I've been teaching for 12 years now. Um, been nine years in the state sector, three years in the private sector. Um, currently head of boys games at St. John's in Southsea. Um, I went into teaching, so I've done the four year teaching degree at Q uh, QTS at University. So there was three teaching practices each year. Um, so it's just a gradual um, kind of experience getting you into the course and after the four years you had the PGC almost to go straight into schools. Um, so stayed down on the south coast, down Portsmouth, Chichester for the last 12 years teaching. Hi everyone, my name is Martin Webdale, um, met Matt at University in Cardiff, so that's the, where the connection is. I took a pretty traditional route into, into teaching, did a three year uh, BSc honours degree at UIC and then moved on to the PGC as well. Uh, from there, went into teaching a state school. From there, moved into an independent boarding school, uh, took a role as a PE teacher and rugby coach. Then moved up north as a director of sport at an independent day school, all the way from four years of age to 18. And then currently work in um, a further education college, running their rugby programme as well. Cool. And Neil? Uh, and I'm Neil Thomas. Um, and my route was slightly different in that I started off doing a, a three year degree in architectural technology and design. Um, about two years into that degree, I found it wasn't quite for me, and teaching had always interested me. So I decided to stay on it at uh, Bristol U to do my PGC in secondary design and technology. Um, and then got my first job at John Cabot Academy up in Kingswood in Bristol. Um, was there for five years, uh, that's where I met Matt. Um, and then I decided I wanted to try something different and, and move abroad. So uh, randomly ended up in Doha in Qatar, uh, in the Middle East, um, where I became head of design technology at Doha College, which is one of the leading British international schools. Um, and then subsequently, during my nine years here, I've made it onto the senior leadership team and I'm currently vice principal for teaching and learning. A wide range of experience, and I think uh, we all agree there's, there's a number of routes into teaching. It's not just the a traditional PGC route um, as well, and it's not just uh, uh, if you're working in a school, it's not necessarily the, the teaching route as well. And we'll, we'll probably talk more around that as well as we go on. Um, Neil, go back to you. I mean, we'll go around as well. So you're we'll talking about achievements and challenges in teaching. So we've got to sort of briefly just talk around yours. What what's been yours and, um, over the years, and and what have you most enjoyed, or or what are, Give us some sort of insights as well about what some of the challenges that you, you've had to do day to day, obviously, uh, long term as well. Yeah, I think that teaching is genuinely a, a, a great career. I think um, you get a huge amount out of it. Um, obviously, depending on your interest, my subject is DT. You know, I'm hugely into art and design and, and everything else. And kind of, um, I think everybody's got their story about a, a favorite teacher. And, and certainly for my school career um you know i wanted to emulate my art teacher as it happened um and once i was into the career starting off at john cabot and then subsequently at doha college i think you know that chance to work with young people um see them develop not every everyone is, is a favorite student um but I, I think that's that's the real challenge is you, you, you know you've got you teach however many hundred of students across an academic year um, and you know finding a way to help develop them in whichever skill set um, whether it's with helping them out in an extracurricular club after school or whether it's helping them find their passion uh, at a level and then subsequently helping them to get to university whatever that path is i think that's the that's the bit around teaching that you know i've enjoyed the most of my 40 years is doing that a number of times you know you get to do it each year etc Sounds like a bit of a corny uh, 
interview answer but yeah genuinely <laughs> you know you know you, you you look to you've chosen to work with young people um and yeah seeing them develop is a, is a huge aspect of it Brilliant. uh martin and you yeah i'd echo everything neil said there in terms of it's, it's a labor of love it's something you've got to enjoy doing and it's definitely something that every single day is a new challenge so you've got to accept those challenges head on for me what my biggest challenge so far was probably moving moving to a new school um, as director of sport being in a new position that was created within the school and having a bit of a blank canvas in terms of trying to create a sporting pathway within that school um, as i mentioned previously all the way from four years of age so first coming into education all the way up to 18 leaving um, leaving education in that respect as well. So creating something new was a huge, huge challenge for me, but something that was really, really exciting. And that included um, not just building a program in terms of extracurricular, in terms of fixtures and facilities, um, sports fixtures, creating and developing fixtures up to about 800 in a year, um, which is a huge, huge challenge that anyone moving into that sort of director of sport, director of rugby has got to think about all the bits and pieces around around the, the sport rather than just the playing and the coaching of it. The organisation, the administration is a huge, huge part of the role. And then on that day-to-day -day basis, making sure that all those things are in place, which is a huge challenge for me. Um, I think moving into a, a new school, I said, was, had, didn't have a, the history and the culture that a lot of the huge independent schools have was brilliant because you could implement your own culture and implement lots and lots of changes on a day-to-day -day basis, which I think was great. Um, in terms of challenges, in the independent sector, potentially if you move into that sector, the huge challenges there are managing expectation of the pupils um, and the stakeholders around that, including the parents, which is a huge thing, I think, in any sort of education. You, you're educating the whole person rather than just that rugby player or that sportsman or that person who's interested in art and DT. You're trying to develop the whole person all the way through their educational careers. So I think that's a huge challenge, but when that comes off, it's a huge, huge positive and a huge benefit for me. Oh, brilliant. And uh, Nathan as well, what about you? Yeah, so I think we touched upon it in terms of just like, I think all of us can have so many memories with regards to why we got into teaching when we were at school. And I think when I go into school, it's like, how am I going to create a memory for that kid? How am I going to give them an opportunity that they'll keep for him for the rest of their life? Because, well, I know you, you and me, Leaky, we're still chatting about the school days, like, like yeah. I said, in, in primary school for it all. Yeah. Like, they're the best years of your life without going too much into it so I think the excitement of giving those kids that those memories that they'll take away with them and the opportunities um whether it's to play sport or whether or not it's it's just to give them a little bit of guidance on the on the pastoral front whether or not it's just to give them a little bit of a pep talk um after a lesson um that's what probably makes it a little bit exciting when you're teaching um the challenge is probably uh, that understanding that not every kid can throw a tennis ball five meters or, or spin pass the ball 10 meters. I think the challenge is the fact of like, they do find your simple skills relatively difficult. So it's just probably adjusting um, and, and making sure that that 18 year old first 15 fly off, how are you going to tailor your, your coaching to that eight year old boy who doesn't like rugby um, and adapt it so that actually all of them are are enjoying the sport and enjoying the, the social aspect of it all as well um that's quite a challenge i think um and a lot of people just think that just because they can pick up a, a tennis racket and and serve that that kid who, who is, is struggling with his coordination isn't gonna have that same amount of success so that's probably a big challenge um probably in the uh state sector doubling up as you know um having having that those 60, 60 kids in a class um, and taking them for a lesson is, is quite a challenge, but quite an exciting one um, at the same time. So probably just understanding that you're not going to have your magic numbers. You're not going to have 18 kids who, who love to play rugby or the, the two sets of scrums that you're going to have to scrum in practice. You're going to have to double up and have 60 kids for a lesson. So that's relatively challenging at times. Yeah I, could, yeah, I could imagine. And uh, I think you, you all kind of touched it there. It's, it's massively rewarding. I think you guys have all got your, your rugby backgrounds as well. And I think um, you know, on that pastoral front, sort of the, the question, I'll see if anyone of you wants to jump in on this, but the, on that pastoral side, how, how you having your rugby backgrounds 
and the skills that you've had there and, and your experiences when you were younger, how important is that as a, a you know, the pastoral side of things at school? How, how important do you think you, you are or, or as a PE teacher or not just a PE teacher, but as a head of year, as a, uh, a, a deputy head for, for Neil and, and, and things like that? How, how has rugby helped you with that side of things? That's to, that's to anyone. That's to, just throwing it out. I'll jump in there if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, just real quickly. I think if you're teaching PE or sport or anything in that respect, you see the child in a different light rather than just being in the classroom. And some, some people obviously, obviously excel in the classroom, whether that's math or English, but a lot of children maybe don't excel in that environment. So you're able to see them excelling in a different environment, whether that's on the rugby field or the cricket pitch, whatever it might be. And I think that's great because you can then feed that back to other members of staff within the school who maybe don't see that child in a similar sort of light. But I think we'll probably touch on this a little bit later, but the tra transferable skills of a rugby player that you've got, that ability to communicate with maybe that and associate probably um, with that slightly more naughty child compared to that perfect angelic person who's always putting their hand up in the front of the mass classroom. You're able to connect with that person in maybe a slightly different way, which I think is really, really beneficial. And you, um, the building of relationships within teaching is huge and be, be able to see through that that person and be able to build that relationship with any sort of child is probably one of the first barriers that you need to try and break down before before you're able to teach them effectively I'd say that building a relationship with someone is absolutely imperative. Now, yeah. you, sorry sorry Bob you know, anything from you on that? On that I mean when you you get say say rugby players come in or uh, the sportsman would naturally gravitate towards that that PE teacher let's say, so you'd naturally have that, that relationship with them straight away. Um, and I think you've got to almost really focus on the, those kids that will shy away, that the, the ones, the beige kids, they, they, they say with regards to go under the radar, um, keep themselves to themselves. I think, as you said, coming from a, a team sport, where we do get on or work to get on with as many people as possible i think focusing on those those kids that sometimes may be forgotten about you'll naturally gravitate to just to try and get like i say a working relationship with them so you naturally have that relationship with those sportsmen um straight away so focus on those those kids that, that probably will be forgotten about um and make a difference in their lives and now anything from you yeah i, I agree with both what the two gentlemen have said i also think that um certainly through my experience rugby just gives you um a, a whole range of skills that you know once again martin said about being transferable across you know you are a good uh, communicator you are approachable in general you know you get on with new teammates maybe at the start of every season you have to introduce yourself um you 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 become approachable i think rugby players in general are quite approachable, quite gentlemanly in, in that way, um, just as the way that the sport is. Um, and I think those skills are really important and they're transferable down as well to younger people. Um, whether you decide to go and work in a primary school, Martin's working with two-year-olds, you know, dealing with a two-year-old and an 18-year-old is very different. But I think it, it's about like doing a game of rugby, those heads up skills that you need doing a rugby game you need to apply to teaching in many in many cases. And I think there are a variety, as I said, about those transferable skills that rugby players should feel confident about having and having developed throughout their careers in taking them into a another platform, teaching that we're talking about today or, you know, whether it's the world of business or whatever else. I think rugby gives you a very, very strong grounding in lots of important life lessons. And, um, yeah, I, I would just encourage the players to use them and think about it logically about what they use during a game or during a season and how that could transfer into real life so if hopefully now we're going to have players watching this and thinking right okay i want to want to get into schools i might have had my level two or, or level three i might have uh, might, might have a degree i might not um, i'm looking at working into schools what are you just i know you touched on that then what would you say then you know, what could they bring to it? Because I think we look at some CVs or experiences as well, you know, not necessarily uh, when you go through job specs or, or job descriptions, not being able to link up what you've, what you've got from, from being a fresh face into, into a school environment or into an education environment as a, as a leader, or as a teacher, as a coach. What sort of those transferable skills? I know you just touched on it slightly, but what, 
other skills Japanese players or pro athletes would have uh, moving across into to those roles? Well, I mean, I think the massive thing at the moment with regards to like the PE curriculum is looking at those transferable skills from one sport to another. So um, you do something called sequencing when you plan your curriculum. So you're looking at how they can transfer skills from, from rugby to football, to football to netball and so on and making those links. Um, so when that rugby player is going into school, they start thinking about actually um, what speed have they developed over their years and how they can transfer that over to football their agility that they've got for rugby how they can they transfer over to, to netball and so on um, and I think they will they will know that a lot of these rugby players and sports men and women out there um, will play a variety of sports because they just love sport and it's just getting to understand that if you've got that that stubborn footballer in a basketball lesson start thinking about actually the the importance of basketball to to uh, work on their coordination, work on their agility is actually transferable. Um, and another thing they're looking at is obviously getting more health related fitness in. So getting it into every single sport. So looking at the speed for football, how you can transfer, transfer sorry, the skills of football and the speed of football into like your rugby and your netball and so on. Um, so it goes back to the sequencing of it all. Um, and that's pretty key with regards to, to teaching, especially in the state sector. Um, and it just makes it so much easier for you, for you when you're planning your lessons, starting to think about not just that that netball lesson or that basketball lesson, but actually those, what do you want them to get at the end of it? Do you want them to become uh, quicker, more agile, improve their coordination, um, their passing, their game understanding, so on. And all of that is applied to a lot of the evasion games and team games that, that they will play. Right. Uh, yeah, just... Sorry, Mark. just Sorry, just saying about the, the transferable skills. Uh, in a previous job I had, um, I had probably a similar situation in terms of a player transitioning out of the professional game, working part-time at the school. And the things he, he brought to the environment in terms of enthusiasm, in terms of energy, in terms of teamwork, and that idea of, of being part of a team, not just a team of students and pupils, but working in the whole PE department was absolutely outstanding and probably he didn't realise that he brought those skills initially but developing those skills from playing professional rugby for 10 years was absolutely huge and that transition for him was was pretty rocky in, in terms of learning the importance of those how to teach or how to coach skills which took the time because he had all the technical and tactical knowledge from being a professional player and that, as Nathan said was able to transfer that into athletics and able to transfer that into football pretty well but making sure that you understood those sort of softer skills teaching with the bits that took longer the transferable skills that he had from the game of rugby being a really excellent communicator being organized being motivated were really really key to him being now highly successful in his own teaching career and it shows a little bit of perseverance and hard work those skills are vital and really really transferable Brilliant. Into Adnil? Uh, yeah I, I, from a kind of academic perspective yeah. with regards to let's say a, a, a teacher a rugby player goes into teaching maths or another subject I think you know the skills that Martin and Nathan have mentioned are exactly the same that you know the, the value of teaching the importance of practice for example in order to get a greater understanding of a mass equation okay it, 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 you need to encourage the students to practice on the importance of that uh, perseverance Martin mentioned resilience I think all those core things that um, uh, rugby players use every single day or every season to go at it again and again and again in, a, in a, what is a very tough world of professional sport I think are very transferable across all subjects and you know with, 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 I think because we're, we're all secondary based I guess you know it's applicable to and I know for a fact it is applicable to primary the younger years as well um, you know that same skill set whichever avenue um, uh, the players choose to take. I think that, yeah, practice, perseverance, resilience, big picture thinking, you know, what is the year scheme of work going to look like across a number of skills? Well, that's the same as looking at, well, what's our season look like? Where's our end goal? How are we going to get there? So I think, you know, once again, it comes back to the conversation of transferable skills. There are a number available and, yeah, it's a, it's a fine amount of confidence. I think, um, 
uh, maybe we're going to touch upon it in a minute, but maybe um, about experience and, and getting some work experience. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, you know, trying to get an understanding of whether you like working in a school environment, but instead about someone coming in and get some experience with him. I think that's a really important aspect. Schools are a tough place to work, whether they're independent or whether they're um, um, LEA schools. It, it doesn't matter. Teaching is a, is a busy and tough profession um, and the more experience you can get of what's potentially ahead of you yeah just reach out to local schools I'm sure they'd love to have you on board to get some experience so I think that's super important. So for me then you just I think you took it there for next steps wise just I think we've just worked out that or well, we, did, we didn't already know teaching is not a, a nine to five job um, it's, it's probably more of a vocation rather than a, a job you're uh, going to make thousands and thousands of pounds off and, um, and live the dream. It's, it's that, you know, you've got to have that drive and that passion as well um, uh, to be a teacher or to, to work in a school, um, not just teachers. So next steps then, what would you, um, what would you say, we sort of just said about work experience. Is there anything else um, next steps wise you could recommend? We're, we're obviously looking to hopefully work with you guys um, and, and some others as well to look at a um, insight day uh, for players, but obviously then then talk about work experience and a, and a program. Now, is there anything else uh, you would recommend during this time, whether, whether it's it's during the the lockdown or, or further on um, that they could the players could start doing? I think they need to. I mean, Twitter at the moment is is going mental with regards to how many resources are flying out um, for, for everything. Um, there's so much. Nando's fitness cards, everything is so so simple that you wouldn't think of it. Just start collecting it all, start getting as much resources as you can. Um, and I mean, well, on that work experience, go into a bad school, I would go into a challenging, difficult school because if you can teach there, you can teach anywhere. I think it's all well and good going to a nice independent school where they've got four teams at seniors, everyone turns up to training. You've got a three-course meal at lunch and so I think, yeah, this is a bit of me. But then that's not going to be what you're going to do for the rest of your life with regards to you want a, a new challenge. So I'd get into those challenging schools um, and get into, like, I, I would get as much experience, but in, in different schools. So they actually just think, actually, I can teach. Definitely would echo all of that. And also, um, obviously, being a professional rugby player, if you volunteer to go into school, they'll probably want you to do a session with their best players to sort of show them off to you and vice versa. But look to work with those low, lower ability people as well, because that's going to give you the background and the knowledge that, that is absolutely key because you're not going to be working with those players day in, day out, full time. You're going to be working with those boys who struggle to catch and pass, who play hockey, swim, maybe struggle to swim, whatever that might be as well. Um, on a practical basis, I'd just say, as you say, get into as many schools, but you're going to need um, an enhanced DBS check. So in this, in this sort of downtime, get on that, get yourself a DBS check that's transferable because then you can volunteer and go into school straight away as opposed to having to wait for that to clear. Um, if you're looking to move into that independent sector, yes, you will be, have the privilege and the opportunity to coach rugby, but probably only for one term up to Christmas. If you're lucky, you might do sevens up to Easter, but you need other strings to your bow. So rugby coaching qualifications, looking to be a director of rugby, probably a level three is the minimum that's out there at the moment in terms of people looking on um, person specifications on jobs. So get on that. Um, but then try and get yourself qualified in other sports, whether that's cricket, athletics, hockey, tennis, because that's going to make you more employable because the, those jobs are very highly subscribed. So make mm. sure that you kind of stand out and look, look a little bit different. So you've made the effort to get outside that sort of bubble of rugby. Um, and then final sort of practical things. If you're in a professional environment, obviously your, your academy will have really good links to schools in the local area. So tap into that find out from those guys who are the schools they're working with and see if you can get on the back of that as well because I think that's probably a really good resource for you as a professional player in that environment as well um, but just get as much experience that you can then go to an employer and say I've done this this and this I'm not a player who's just coming out of the professional game and not quite sure what I'm going to do so I'm going to jump on a teaching bandwagon because the 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 environment is very highly subscribed. There's a lot of people trying to get those similar jobs. So try and be that X factor. Show yourself you've got something different and extra strings to your bow as well. Brilliant. Yeah, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm very very brief, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I would just say um, try and get a range of ages. So go and try primary school. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite a shock. It's a different kettle of fish <laughs> dealing with 15, 16 year olds. Uh, but at the same time, you know, six form colleges, you know, in the UK, go and have a look at specific age groups. Um, and what I, I would say is really important is, is try and find your passion. Um, I teach design and technology because I love design. Um, I, I also love rugby, but, you know, I do that after school or help out with these ECAs, I always have. So, you know, the two gentlemen are obviously sports background, sports subject as their subjects, but there's also an opportunity for you to follow your passion into teaching, but also get that rugby experience or sporting coaching experience as well. So, yeah, I just really encourage them to get a load of age ranges in and, uh, yeah, find, find your passion because the best teachers are passionate about their subjects. Mm. Oh, no, I think just on that experience, I'll just say in terms of like even little things like minibus, get your minibus D1 um, for it all, like qualifications like that where you can you should should be getting it just makes you even more employable. That's, that's brilliant, boys. Um, thank you very much. We're gonna we're gonna probably get kicked out in a minute, but um, I want to go just say thank you very much for for all your help. Um, I'll be keen to speak to you. Uh, you know, just short snippets or, or some sort of webinars in the next couple of weeks, just just one on one. Um, maybe go to sort of 10, 15 minutes, a bit more in depth about yourselves and, and some more advice as well. But gentlemen, thank you so much. You've been, uh, you've been brilliant. Thank you.